Hello everybody, welcome to R&D Week and welcome to the review of the Ark in Space with Dylan. So with that said, let's just get into the review and I hope you enjoy. So, hello everybody, welcome to the TT Institute and welcome to R&D Week. This is Tuesday and I am joined with Dylan and we are doing the Ark in Space review. So, what are your first thoughts of the episode? Yeah, hi. What, are the, what, what do you think of the episode then, Ark in Space? Overall? I thought it was a actually really good episode because, like the whole series, it, the whole series it's in has just got good episodes throughout. Yeah, yeah, there are no bad episodes in that series. Did you say that Ark in Space was one of your favorite stories? It was one of the first I saw. All oh, right, really? Uh, yeah, I was like, it's not my favorite, but it's a good one. Mm-hmm, definitely, because I mean, I don't have. Any, I mean, I guess it, I guess you probably like it a lot more because of nostalgia. But at the end of the day, this episode is is brilliant. And what I've noticed is it has a pretty similar, you know, um, synopsis to the film Alien. If you think about it, yeah, yeah, I know how much you love Alien. Oh yeah, Alien is ama- Alien Covenant is amazing. The other film, the, no, the whole franchise is great. To be fair, actually, but Alien Covenant is where it's at. But anyway, so Arkin. um, so talking about Ark in Space, um. So, what do you think of the acting then? Let's talk about um, let's talk about Tom Baker first of all, because this is his second story, and he's already thrown himself into the role, you know, brilliantly. I think this episode kind of defines his Doctor. Oh yeah, because it's not he doesn't take it like too. He's not a too serious character in it because no. he still like jokes throughout the episode. No, like, that's right. Yeah, and I like how he's still like an excitable kid during, throughout the episode. Like, you know how in like early on he does that speech about humans? Yes, he does when he's in the, the um the room with the hibernation pods and he's talking about um how how they, you know, oh, Homo sapiens, what an inventive, invincible species and all that. That's a brilliant speech actually, isn't it? But yes. Yeah, it's just like, I like how we got quite excitable of him to do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Is there a dog in the background? <laughs> Oh no, that's just Steve. He just oh, does. Okay. Okay. Hi, Steve. He likes to pretend he's an animal. Oh, okay. I see. That makes sense. It makes sense. Okay. So, um, so right. Talk, let's talk about Liz Sladen then. So, what do you think about her, you know, performance as Sarah Jane? I think in this episode she had quite a lot to do. Like, in retrospect to other episodes with, with classic companions, because they're just there to say, "Oh yes, Doctor." Yeah. Exactly. Yes. But a well, great she... example is um Joe Grant. But anyway, yeah. Oh, I missed you. Yeah, same. Anyway, so um, I think Sarah Jane was very was actually had a lot of use, well, at least to the story, because she was like teleported um, and then put in a hibernation she went pod. That tunnel. Oh yeah, that was great. That was great banter in that scene, actually, with her, her and the Doctor. Right. So every time I watch it, it makes me laugh. Yeah, it puts a smile on my face. It's like, oh, it's like they're they're busy mates at the end of the day. It's a it's a great scene, and it's and it's it, there's a great it's a great relationship between the Doctor and the companion, isn't it? It's at the end of the day, you can't really get yeah, much better like, than Tom Baker and Liz Sladen. He's like Sarah's not a normal companion. You can see like they have a proper like best friendship. Yeah, exactly, exactly. You don't really see, see that, that with, with any of the others. No, that's right. And I mean, going back to the Doctor really quickly, you said that um that, that this is his second story, and yet he throws himself into the role, and and how he still has a bit of humour to him. Yeah, he's like serious at times, which is which is brilliant. It really does define his his doctor brilliantly, doesn't it? Like yeah, yeah, because that's pretty much his doctor throughout, isn't it? Making light of any situation, but ultimately dealing with the problem at hand, pretty much straight away. Which like is he can brilliant. change from a nice person, and then in an instant he can change to a serious, mm. hardcore, like dangerous person. Exactly, it's brilliant. I mean, I mean, um. I think it was Pirate Planet when he was talking to that guy and he was yelling at him and talking about the destruction of planets and all that. I mean, it's brilliant. It can it can turn on a dime like in an instant. It's it's really is really does show in this in this episode as well. Um, mm. But yeah, um, so um, I really really do. I think this is my favorite Tardis team actually. The um, Harry Sullivan, Sarah Jane, and the Doctor, Fourth Doctor. I was never really a fan of Harry. He really? always. Annoyed me. Because like he's like low key sexist. Oh right. And I was like, let let Sarah be Sarah. She's yeah, not like yeah. four, and you're not from the sixties. No, exactly. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit like that, isn't it? Yeah, and he's just his klutziness just gets on my nerves. 
Yeah. Oh, yeah. Definitely. Definitely does. With um, I, I mean, I do love that scene when there's a laser beam coming out of the ceiling, and they're like, trying to. Deal I, I like with the bit where he just like pokes his hat up. <laughs> yeah, I just love that whole scene. It's just, it's just, it's laughable. I just, it's this this episode is like really just fun in general. Like the banter between the Doctor and Sarah, and obviously the Doctor and Harry trying to deal with that problem. It's just, it, there's so many little fun moments in there that really do like lighten the mood of the episode. And yeah, it's yeah. not an overly serious episode. No, so it that's... isn't. I mean, I mean, episodes that take themselves too seriously tend to be a bit not boring, but a little bit too. I don't know, maybe a bit too slow. Um, maybe feel a little bit, you know, draggy the episodes. But when it has a little bit of light humor here and there to to keep the the story going, it's it's this really is, good. This is why I like New Who in a way is like better because it doesn't take every episode as seriously. Well, it kind of does, to be honest. Hold on, hold on, hear me out, hear me out. Okay. It's like each episode has forms of humor in it which help drive the story along, and they don't just like do a completely serious episode. No, I guess. It's like, but in the classic one, you know, in the, that fifth Doctor one with the Daleks was like resurrection of yes. the Daleks. A bit higher that death one. count than Terminator. Yeah, yeah it was a, mad. As a good episode it was, but it took itself way too seriously. It's a, oh, it's, a, it's a mad episode, though, at the end of the day. It's really good. Well, hold, on, hold on. One minute. One minute. I need to go do something. Hold on. I'll, I'll just sit here then. Right, I'm back. Oh, hey. Right, back to the review. Probably going to keep that in, to be honest. Or at least what? I'm going to look over what you've done while I was gone. Wait, was it still recording? Oh, yeah. Oh. Uh, <laughs> get wrecked. So, back to the review. So, where were we? Um, so, we're talking about... Um, yeah, we're talking about cast. So, um, moving on from the TARDIS team, actually, unless you have something else to say about it. Like, uh, Sullivan or anything. So, um, let's talk about um, the side cast. So, there was this um, woman called um, Vaya, right? Her name was? Like, I thought it was, like, Vera. <laughs> Vaya. I think it was Vaya. I'm not sure. You can, uh, you're the one with the wiki. Let's check this. That's very, I don't very think, loud I don't typing. Think she had a lot of emotion in, in her. No, there isn't really much emotion in any of the um side cast really they were they kind of oh, you're right they, they kind of just die at the end of the day they were just there for filler the mm. extras like yeah at least know. it brings the story along yeah it does it does actually but it, i think yeah it i mean it does definitely fill out the episode and it does bring an extra dynamic to it rather than just being the doctor and his companions traveling across a ship like mm. with just the aliens but yeah i don't know um I did like um, one of the the guy you know Noah. Um, the guy who had bubble wrap around his hand. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's talk about bubble wrap in a sec. Yeah, yeah. But I think in the episode he was quite good at it because like you could see he was yeah. conflicted during the whole thing yeah. and like exactly. like yeah he starts off as a complete douchebag. Yeah, yeah. But like at the end like yeah, he doesn't he... want. To see them dead because yeah, like exactly. he's in love with Vira yeah. and then, I like that it was sweet yeah I mean um, I mean the acting at the start was, was pretty good from the actor at the most part um, yeah I mean he didn't he definitely had some conflicting emotions within him um, and then the end of the day he kind of fought back his body or something and he was able to to blow up blow, to sacrifice himself right is that yeah that, yeah yeah, I think that's what. Anyway, yeah, I, so that was good. He kind, they kind of redeemed his character in the end, which was good of him. But yeah, um, apart from the those characters, I don't think there are any more notable characters in the episode. To be honest, just there were like other people, but I think they just kind of died. Yeah, during... they kind they woke up and then they died. They were there. Yeah, they were just they there. Fun. They were just there. They were just filler. Yeah. But yeah, um, so let's talk about the special effects because they were naff they were they spent so much money on bubble wrap yeah i know how could they to be fair though i I think they completely blew out all of their budget um in this series on the um genesis of the daleks and uh robot didn't they for for season 12 so i didn't so they tried to work with what they had but what's good though is that when you have a good story like this it doesn't need um, like amazing special effects they just you know I don't know. Like kind of the bubble wrap was the only downside. Like the set was good. It, oh, the yeah. whole 
the arc was really it good. It worked. It was. It, you could tell that the that the arc was like you could tell what they were trying to do of the arc, and it and it worked in its own way. And I mean, they had to. I mean, yeah, it, yeah, it was all right. It was it was an all right set. It was just the bubble wrap at the end of the day. Yeah, but I don't know. Yeah, the wine looks good. Yeah, no, the women were all right. Uh, they were right. You could tell that they were models being held up by string or by um, body stunt double actors or whatever, you know. But yeah, but back in the day, you know, it's it's they still looked good. Yeah, no, no, no they did look good for their time. Um, yeah, I mean, yeah, it's not terrible. It's not a draconian or anything, but it is all right, isn't it? I like the draconian. Yeah, yeah, great design, isn't it? But anyway, so I think, yeah, the, I mean, the idea of, of the episode was brilliant. The writing is superb. And um, you might already know this, but Russell T. Davis, this is his favourite story, um, Ark in Space. Yeah. I did not know that. But yeah, that's um, Russell T. Davis' favourite story, um, oh. which is interesting, isn't it? But this story is brilliant, actually. It it's a, really, it's a really good one because it does have a good balance of humour and, you know, seriousness to it because people dying and all that, but... But also the humour and the, the, you know, the slight you know banter that goes on with the Doctor and his companions and all that. It's, it's just a really good paced story with a good atmosphere oh, yeah. with all the characters and oh, stuff. Yeah. The setting was brilliant as well because um I mean, um from I mean we had a lot of these space sort of um, themed episodes uh, in the sixties, especially in Troughton's era with like Wheel in Space and uh, like Seeds of Death, for example. But in John Pertwee's era, we had next to nothing of that, didn't we? Because it was um, set on Earth. Yeah, it was all set on Earth for the most part, with a couple of well, them in in the latter half of his era being in space and being <laughs> on different planets. But Dylan? Yeah. <laughs> What's happened? Nothing. Don't worry. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I, I do think that um it was I think this episode was probably extremely popular at the time as well because of it being a, a space themed episode, like because we had they hadn't had many of those since the Pertwee era, since before the Pertwee, Pertwee era. Yeah, because it kind of brings it back to old Doctor that yeah. most people grow up with, exactly. even from what seventy from the seventies. You think this story influenced Alien, which came first? I, um, no, it was definitely Ark in Space that came first. Definitely Ark in Space came first. That's what's funny though, because um, uh, what was it called? Um, there was this uh. Oh yeah, there was this ep- there's this film that come out really recently, and it's about um, controlling the weather from an from an outer space space station, which that sounds, sounds a lot like the moon base, doesn't it? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, and and I'm there being like natural that. disasters going on. That's what the film's about. They can they definitely took the idea of the of a place controlling the weather in outer space. Yeah, copyright Doctor Who. Yeah, man. exactly. They're 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 cherry picking all the good parts of Doctor Who. <sighs> God damn it. Get your own life. Exactly. Get an original Maybe. idea. Just go grab something from Doctor Who instead. Lovely. But yeah. Doctor Who? No, this is... Doctor Who is full of ideas. So everybody wants to take ideas from Doctor Who. But yeah. So, I mean, this, this episode... I mean, Ark in Space is really good, actually. I mean, Ark in Space just embodies, like, how consistent in quality season 12 is and, and the fourth doctor's era is at least in the first half of his era but yeah I like, there's a bit about in the episode you know where sarah is just like about to be put in the thing and she goes through that trippy you oh, know yeah, with and, that she voice. Get, and she gets teleported into the hibernation system or whatever yeah i didn't like it i felt that that part should have been left out i wasn't mm. a fan of that part because it didn't really yeah, i mean Apart from um, them exploring the rest of the ship, they could have done that without having to look for Sarah. Exactly. That yeah. was, I think that was just filler. Yeah, definitely filler. There was a lot of filler in it, but at the end of the day, they need to lengthen out the story somehow. So, I mean, it was a necessary way to... A necessary thing to put in so that they could be able to find the uh, the hibernation, like, pods or whatever, that little... that big room, you know, where all the last humans are stored or whatever, if you know what I mean. So, yeah. And what I noticed though of the design of that room is that there, there's this top platform, but there's no floor to it, and there are people just up there, like hibernating. So what if they eventually wake up and they just fall straight to the ground? Do you know what I mean? Well, then there'll be less humans. <laughs> yep, that's true. Even though they've even though they've they've already got very few humans. And but... does someone have to wake up every single person one at a time? Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Actually, that's a very like... good point. And how this will they even get system. to those higher spots in the in the room? Where will they need like a ladder or? She brought oh, a step ladder. Exactly. 
this whole system is flawed. Yeah. It doesn't work. Yeah. 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 The advanced, the most advanced race of hibernation. They don't even have a wake up call. Like they don't. They have to wake them up separately. I don't know. Oh, that reminds me as well. Yes. This episode is like mirroring the Silurians. Oh my god, that's true, isn't it? Because, because yeah, because the Earth cooling down and everything. Except they didn't hide underneath the Earth. They they hid. They yeah, they hid in arc, space. and the Silurians had an arc as well. That's true. They did. And also, another thing: the humans' alarm clock didn't work because yep. the Wirren yep. broke it. Yeah, exactly. So they slept in. Yeah. Doctor ah, Who's stealing off itself now. Exactly, it is ripping off off itself. That's true. No, but no, but to be fair though, that could be um, implied that the doc that the um, humans knew about the Silurians and how they um their idea to hibernate when the Earth cooled down and all that. So they decided to take ideas from their, you know, methods. Maybe they did know, because yeah. like they've met the Silurians and then maybe in that time the Silurians woke up and they had peace. Hmm. Maybe. Who knows? I mean, um, in Sontaran Experiment, like, the Earth is completely cooled down and it's just a, a land of just fields and everything, which is funny. A um, land of fields and potatoes. <laughs> yes. You mean okay, that? I think one thing with that whole, this whole Nerva storyline. Yeah. I didn't like how they just left it after Sontaran Experiment. Yes. Like, they should have, mm. No, 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 they continued it with Revenge of the Cybermen, didn't they? Not really, though, because they didn't have all those, like, they didn't have the same arc, they didn't have the people from it, they didn't no. completely separate, which annoyed me. I mean, it's still set on Nerva, at least, which kind of does link it back, but I don't know. I, eh. Either way, it was, it was a, it's a good idea how they have a, an arc little thing that runs through the season, rather than just being separate stories, like in... What season seven or season thirteen or any season of Doctor Who that isn't like Trial of a Time Lord or Key to Time or something? I like. I still liked it though. I liked yeah. the, those episodes. Mm, yeah, exactly. I mean, Ark in Space is a really brilliant story. Actually, it does introduce us to Nerva and all that. I think it's very good. But yeah, but, but the whole thing at the end of Sontaran Experiment, where um, where the Galsec um soldiers get beamed up to Nerva. We don't get we don't get to see any more of that. You're right. Not any more of those characters. So, um with this review in mind, um what do you think what are you going to give the episode out of 10, Dylan? Hmm. I'm going to give it an 8 mm. out of 10. I'm going to give it an 8 out of 10 as well because it's it's a it's a cracking story actually. It's be cheap. Really good. Huh? Are you get your about? own number. 8.5! Okay, there you go. <laughs> God's sake. Right, so yeah, um, this episode was actually really good. Um, yeah, I mean, I, like I say, I love the TARDIS team involved. I I love the setting, actually. The only problem is <laughs> it's the bubble wrap. The bubble wrap snake that slivers across the ship. But, you know, it's a good story. Great writing, actually. Really good You're writing. Right. Yeah, the story itself was really good. Mm -hmm, exactly. I mean, I, oh, if you saw an episode like this in the new Who, in the new series, it, oh man, it would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Can we have more bubble wrap? <laughs> yeah, they'll need a lot more bubble wrap for the new series. They need a yes. bigger budget. I I think they should bring back the Wirren. Yes, they should. I think they I think they came back once in a big finish audio, but I can't remember for the life of me what it is. They have done audios, yeah. Mm, yeah. Definitely. Oh, there's a couple um, books um, with the Wirren as well. I'm not sure which ones those. But but yeah, I mean, the Wirren have come back. But I think in, in the show it would be cool if we did see them come back. Because it's a, it's a good monster. It's a good idea for a monster. Yeah, because they, they, they look good. But with now technology, with all yes. those CGIs. Like remastering them, yeah. That would be brilliant. I'm just going to see. Yeah, what have they been in? They've been in a couple audios, actually. Really? I know they've been in an audio called We're in Isle, which is self explanatory in the title. And then they were in a an Eighth Doctor thing called We're in Dawn. Really? Is that a book? They... I think that's a book, right? No, no, these are oh. audios. And then they were in Race Memory. Right, okay. And then they were in a Zygon one called Homeland. Really? Yeah. Damn. They've been in a bit then, haven't they? I mean, oh, they're and they're in Time Lord here. Fairy Tales. Oh, are they? Okay. Oh, that's a book. Yeah, oh, okay, fair, fair. Okay, no, that's fair enough. 
That's fair enough. I mean, the Warren do need to come back in the new series. It'll be interesting to see them remastered. Mm. But yeah, that's pretty much it with the review, I guess. Is there anything else you want to say about the episode? Um, mm, I want to see them do a prequel. Mm. Oh, you mean on Nerva or with the Wirren? With the Wirren, you know, because like how they, like in the episode, the Wirren said, oh, they were fighting humans for like a thousand years. Mm, that's true. Maybe maybe the new series should like expand on that idea and maybe have a little, uh, you know, maybe like a human race fight against the Wirren or something. Exactly. That would be good to see. That would be brilliant because they'd be expanding on an already amazing story and they'd be doing it in a way that wouldn't ruin this story if it was bad. Because it's disconnected slightly to Ark yeah. in Space, but it has a nice little inside reference to Ark in Space with the with the Ark and the Wirren attacking the Ark in Revenge. But yeah, that would be brilliant if they did that. That would be really cool. And they could make a slightly like varied design of the Wirren because it would have been like so many thousands of years before Ark in Space took place, obviously. So, mm. so they could slightly alter the design because obviously they did that with the Silurians badly but you know what i mean though they like to redesign monsters don't they but yeah i mean who knows it might be a nice idea if they did do that um hopefully someone in the bbc be watching this probably not but you know dave are you watching this yeah come on dave get on this tell linda to do it (laughs) tell linda to do this episode yeah (laughs) god damn it (laughs) right so um hope you enjoyed this review guys and we will see you guys next time goodbye bye i love you <laughs> especially you kevin so there was the review of the ark in space i hope you enjoyed this review and uh we will see you guys next time goodbye <laughs>